say it. I don't even really feel like. Well, then you make sure you teach them at home. You need to let them know. Because they sit up in church and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. My God. My Lord. Even though their spirit man is still awake. But they're asleep. The body is asleep. And you think because you don't value it, then you don't see no value in teaching them. But there is value because one day they could, they could grow up too. That's right. And they need to know the true meaning of communion. That's right. But if you don't value it, uh -huh. then you won't teach them. That's right. All right. So we have to make sure we don't keep that cycle going. We don't want to keep that cycle going, right? Right, little buddy?
And it says here, it is so simple, but preachers, <laughs> but, but preachers have for so long made Christians fearful and sin conscious. Mm -hmm. When God wants us to be sun conscious. All right. He just wants us to examine ourselves to see if we are putting our faith in his son's work on the cross for us. So that's what we need to be examining ourselves about. Not about the sin. It's about the son. And he paid the price, right? So if we, if as long as we recognize that, then we can eat and drink worthy. Because it's not about us, it's about him. Okay, what does it mean to drink judgment to yourself? Thirdly, the judgment in verse 29 does not mean God's anger or wrath as I used to, as we used to think. I used to think that too. God's wrath. All of that was placed on Jesus. God's wrath and anger was placed on, and he satisfied it. So God's not angry at us anymore. He's not angry. Judgment, and therefore, and sending, and God sending them to hell. So that was a fear that people had. Well, God going to send you to hell. I hear people still saying that today. God ain't sending you to hell. You're sending yourself. By not believing in his son. The Lord's Supper is how God helps us offset the process of aging and walk in divine health. If you go to the store and see all of these cosmetic products, that tell you that if you use this, you get rid of the wrinkles. If you use, if you take this, you won't be aging. If you drink this, you and we'll spend a million dollars trying to find a fountain of you. And we had it all the time, right here in the community. Isn't that amazing? I used to think it was just women, but men the same way. They want to, they want to still look. Young and they don't want to be aging, but you don't have to. The Lord suffers how God helps us offset the process of aging and walk in divine health. Yes. So stop spending all your money going to get the cucumber and putting it here and then putting it the, the whatever they use it here. And shrink this and take this away and blah blah blah. This, blah. And you're still waiting on it to happen. And then you think, well, it didn't work with that. I will get another treatment. I'll get some Botox, I'll do this, I'll do that. All of that stuff that you're spending right. all this money, just take a minute and believe God. Right. Believe God. And you can offset the aging process. See right. how simple God made it. <laughs> he made it simple, but man complicated it because right. they believed a lot. Right. They believed a lot. But now we know the truth, so we don't have to worry about that. When Adam sinned against God, a divine sentence fell on the human race. Weakness, sickness, and death are some effects of the divine sentence. As long as we are here on the earth, our bodies are subject to age to the aging process, which is a part of the divine sentence. All our bodies are decayed every day. Our brain cells are dying daily. The Holy Communion, the Holy Communion, mm -hmm. the Holy Communion is God's solution for us to offset the decay. All right. Isn't that so? That's wonderful. And you see every day in these magazines, they sell you all the all. They try to sell you a bill of goods. And you're looking at that and you think, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh well, I don't know since we're past that. But I mean some people are still buying into that. They got a, a, a cosmetic place full of stuff. And then none of it None of it working. But look what he said. Do you believe what the word of God said? The Holy <laughs> Communion is God's solution yes. to offset the decay. If you look how long they lived back in the Bible day. I don't think they're making humans any different than they're making them today. <laughs> Shop, then maybe they'll, uh, you can actually shop.
continues to, to bring that to her. And he's bringing it to her because he's trying to see. She ain't got it. She don't believe it. So I'm going to continue to torment her. I'm going to continue to torture her. Spiritual, intense spiritual attack. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? But as often as we do the communion and put ourselves in remembrance, I look right in the mirror as I took the communion. And I tell him, now you take this. This is his body. He took this. So I didn't have to. So I would have to. Now in your face. And I will partake of the body. Do you see? We have to be bold. But it's a process. You have to get there. You have to get there, but you have to be determined. You have to continue to take communion, take communion. Prince said he was dealing with a situation, but he kept taking communion. He kept confessing the word of God, the body of Christ. And then he looked around, and it was gone. Mm -hmm. It was gone. Mm -hmm. But we have to stay at it, don't we? Yes. We have to. The spiritual intensity, we will experience victory when we believe that what Jesus did on the cross is greater than any attack of the devil. When we believe. So now when you have to ask yourself, what do I believe? Do you understand? What do you believe? Because it's all about you as an individual. What do you believe? Do you believe in what Jesus did on the cross for you? Or do you believe he just did it for pastor? Oh, he did it for pastor because, see, she probably fast, she probably prayed, she probably read the Bible. It ain't about what she did, it's about what Jesus did. I was one of those people. I used to think, well, this, this is spiritual leaders. You know, they pastors, they this, this and they that. How many of y'all know that when God, when Jesus gave his life, he gave his life for all of us. It wasn't about no titles. It wasn't about who read the, the, the most scriptures. It wasn't about who fasted the most. It was all about Jesus. But because we're looking at self, because we're looking at individuals, 